Hello everybody, welcome to um, today's little quiz. Uh, first of all, I'm sorry if my audio sounds really bad. It's because my microphone went kaput on me, uh, on my computer, and um, I'm still working out why that is the case. But in the meantime, since I don't have an external microphone, I'm just using a pair of headphones because uh, you can actually do that because uh, they work in basically the same way, only headphones are designed to take um, electrical signal and turn it into uh, audible sound. But really, I if you give it audible sound and just plug it into the he the microphone jack, it turns it into electrical signal. Just not, not so great. So I'm, I apologize for that if you have trouble hearing me. But um, anyway, let's move on. So how I'm going to do this is uh, just give you the question and I'd like you to pause it and try and work it out on your own. Um, and, uh, and then once you have an answer, or if you get stuck, then press play again. And, uh, and I'll go over it. Okay, so question one says, a rocket's altitude, so I missed an apostrophe there, whoops. Anyway, a rocket's altitude can be determined by the function h of t equals minus 2.5 t squared plus 100 t. At what time does the rocket reach its maximum height? And what is the maximum height? Alright, so why don't you go ahead and pause it in 3, 2, 1, mark. Alright, so hopefully you pause it and try to work it out on your own. Um, and now I'll go over the solution. I think there's probably an algebraic way to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it the calculus way. Um, just to expose you to that. Um, either way you did it is fine, I guess. But, uh, okay, so the, the function was h of t equals minus 2.5 t squared plus 100 t. Okay. So, how are we going to go about doing this? Well, um, um, when the, um, when the height is at its maximum, you see this graph looks kind of like this, this velocity right here is zero, as you can tell. Um, so, um, what we might want to try and do is take dh dt and set it equal to zero, then solve for t. So why this is the case is because, um, well, you remember the formula distance equals rate times time. Rate is equal to the change in position over the change in time which is the, uh, well, in this case, it's dh dt. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the derivative of this. So dh dt equals, remember our power rule, it's minus 5t plus 100. And we want to set this equal to zero. And from here, it's pretty easy. We're just like uh, t equals 100 over 5, which is, what is that, 20, I think? 20? 20 seconds. I should have mentioned it's the in seconds. And maybe this is in meters or something. Um, okay. So we have our time, that's part of our answer. Now, now, in order to find its maximum height, we just plug 20 seconds into here. H of 20 is equal to minus 2.5 times 20 squared is 400 plus 100, looks like 700. 100 times 20. 
which is, let me just calculate this out quick, minus 2.5 times 400 plus 100 times 20 is 1,000 meters. So it reaches 1,000 meters. Ta-da! And that is the solution to number one. Question number two. A one kilogram rocket is launched on the moon and their gravitational acceleration is 1.3, uh, 1.63 meters per second squared. Excuse me. Um, straight up with a, velo with a thrust following this equation t of t equals 50 minus 10t. And it wants us to plot a curve for v of t, for the velocity. Uh, this is going to be kind of interesting with this uh, 10 that I'm writing with on the screen. But we'll try it. So why don't you go ahead and try it on your own first. Um, and pause. And we're back. Okay, so what was G? It was like 1.63 or something. What else do we know? We know the mass of the rocket is, um, what was it? One kilogram. What else do we know? Oh yes, we know the thrust. Thrust is equal to 50 minus 10t. And this is a function of time. Okay, so what's V of T? Well, we've got our equation from before, which was, um, shoot, it was dv, dv equals Force times mass over dt, or something like that. Force times m over, d whoa, it's supposed to be a d, dt. So this force we have to calculate. Our net force, we only have two forces here. Since it's on the moon, there's no atmospheric drag or anything. It's just weight, and there's thrust. So this equals 50 minus 10t and minus mg. Minus mg. Okay. And... Um, so we, we plug that in here, 50 minus 10t minus mg times m over dt. This is our, our um, derivative, uh, I mean, differential for velocity. Shoot, did I get that formula right? I want to pause the video and check that quick. And we're back, and I knew I messed something up because this was not going to integrate correctly. Um, I got the m and the, the dt mixed up, and I don't know why I did that dt's on top. See, now we can integrate this here. So, v of t equals, um, so integrating this, we'll have, this is the constant because it doesn't depend on t. This depends on t, so that will do something with, and that's also a constant. Um, in which case m looks like it's going to cancel out there. So, um, well, 
what we do here is we have 50 over m and uh, we multiply that by t since we're integrating. Then um, we'll have um, minus 10t over m to integrate that. We'll have, let's see, what would that be? Um, it'll be t squared. Uh, it'll be 5t squared minus 5t squared over m. Whoops, not 50t squared. Lots of mistakes. Um, and then we'll do minus g times t. And that should be everything. Plus c, I guess. Um, except I think we might be told that it starts from rest. Uh, no, we're not told that. Okay, so there could be some initial velocity there. Alright, so there we have a function for velocity. I'm not going to graph it. You can do that yourself if you really want to. Um, but there we have it. That's all I have for this quiz. Um, stay tuned for lecture 4, which is... I kind of combined um, chemistry and thermodynamic concepts into one lecture. And that should be coming shortly. Um, thanks for watching.